And we're recording. Hello, hello. <laughs> Hi, everyone. Thank you for joining us. I am so excited. Um, I'm Todd, and I'm just thrilled to be hosting this amazing reading uh, with four wonderful, wonderful poets in celebration of the release of Alexander Matra's new book from the Culture Society, We Fell Into Weather. And that book is available here at Moe's, where we are virtually, Moe's Bookstore in Berkeley, uh, which we love, 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 love. Go visit them. They are open for social distanced, masked, of course, um, browsing and buying. So please go there and you will even find, I mean, if you hurry, because it's going to sell out fast, but if you hurry, you can find We Fell Into Weather on their shelves. If you don't get there soon enough, you can go to their um, bookshop.org store and buy it there, um, as well as from the Cultural Society's website as well, of course. Um, I should note, if you hear honking and screaming of joy outside, it's because the entire Castro has erupted into um, joyous celebration. This is the historic day, November 7th, um, of the calling of the 2020 election for not Trump, for Biden, for anybody, not Trump. Trump has lost the election. Loser Trump has lost the election. It's very sad. We're all mourning horribly, um, but poetry will, will pull us through. Um, <laughs> so yes, it's, we're very, very, very happy to be here on this day and can't wait for January 20th. Okay, this recording will be released and if you're watching it, will have already been released um, on Mo's website and Facebook on November 20th. And so yes, please thank Mo's for hosting this wonderful reading and go buy books at Mo's. Okay, so the way this reading is gonna take place uh, is in four rounds of um, two to three minutes, maybe four each. So each poet will go in succession. There will be Tiff Dressen, Emily Sue Leibovitz, Claire Marie Stancic, and Alexandra Matra in that order, four times round um, for two to four minutes each. Uh, it's really fun. I've seen this. I participated in this before. It's a really fun way to do it. Um, you're going to have a great time, and this is going to be a fabulous reading. Um, before that starts, Tiff and Alex are going to start the whole thing out with a collaborative reading. And I am going to go ahead and get business out of the way and give you their wonderful author bios. Please, um, you can check in the chat um, as the event um, proceeds for links to their books as well. Tiff Dresden lives in the Portola neighborhood of San Francisco. Her book, Songs from the Astral Bestiary, a slender full-length collection of poetry emerged from Lyric and Press in 2014. In 2019, they played the role of Earl of Kent in Milkwood Theater's production of King Lear. I saw it, they were fabulous. Uh, in their spare time, they enjoy playing the role of Urban Flaneur, which they do wonderfully. Check out their Facebook page for great photos, um, as well as setting type and printing at the SF Center for the Book. I'm sure Tiff can't wait to get back there in person. Tiff's a wonderful poet. You're going to love their work. Emily Sue Leibowitz is the author of National Park from Grandma Press slash Black Ocean, which came out in 2018, and the chapbook In Any Map from The Fabulous Song Cave, which came out in 2015. Uh, Emily's a graduate of the Iowa Writers Workshop, and she co-edits Lung Magazine and lives in Brooklyn, New York. Claire Marie Stancic is the author of three books, most recently Word Bird, which is newly out from Omnidon Publishing. Ooh, Omnidon, right here in the Bay Area. With Jane Gregory and Lynn Higinian, she co-edits Nyon Editions, a chapbook press. She lives in Oakland, California. Alexandra Matra is Berkeley poet and critic who has authored several books. Uh, Small Siren is available at the Cultural Society. Uh, they published it in 2018. And two of her chapbooks can be found at Dancing Girl Press, 2013 and 2017. Other poems and reviews have appeared uh, in such fabulous venues as Denver Quarterly, Jacket 2, Interim, Volt, and elsewhere. A queer mother and eco-feminist, Alexandra curates an art-centric writing and performance series called Lone, Grand, Lone Glen, now in its ninth year. Her new book, We Fell Into Weather, is her second fully collection of poems, and we are very excited 
to celebrate it with her. Woo! Okay, so that's all the business, I believe. I'm going to sit back and enjoy and introduce this collaborative poem by Alex and Tiff. Take it away. All right, thank you so much, Todd. So it's been a pleasure uh, collaborating with Alex for quite some time now. I can't remember how long it's been, but it's been a while. Here, and so we here. Have... Yeah. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> time passes. Um, so this is our sort of latest collaboration and very recently revised. And uh, we'll just kick it off. Okay. Symbiosis. Epigraph. Begin afresh in the realms of the atmosphere that encompasses the solid earth, the terraqueous globe that soars and sings. Lisa Robertson. One, he said, why don't you try replacing the word light? Strip the body and list, focal, temple, currency. In the bank unrequited, stand in the grass, Mirror the sun for hours and sway. Pretend you embrace long burnt breath, eye strung looks. This needle that sears is a cross stitch, a word scarred, your right calf twitching. He said to keep you, I cut out the brightest part of me, the brightest part, bioluminescent. When I'm near water, I spread my fingers like starfish. My hands were the part of me I liked best. Two, bright things confide, tile a confused floor. As if plastic beaded wrists, some time in the afternoon, mud outlines. Shoes or drawers, dry eyes spread and panic the day. Your nicotine yellow in the grout, your terrible teeth, my legs decline. A spot of light on the back porch where ferals come to eat. The crepuscular hour, the promissory note hour, evening's threshold hum, him on concrete, songs for the curbside. Three. You served him the papers in the asphalt downpour, the aftershock of rain, homonym, honeymoon, the contract, stunned cat claws bracing my dress to flush. We are pressed into flesh that weather made us feel like that old school sense of corresponding in your own handwriting. I write, I'd like to replace the word light with co-op or housing? Why do we respond to water stories? Bright things confide. Four, rain fist twisting the blinds. A house not home, you answer. How rain songs hold weather. An umbrella turns inside out, then blows open. Wind currency. The handwritten note thrown back, tiny tabs you folded on desks, now arrest air. You said the throat can change the weather. This morning I encountered an enormous sunflower, helianthus. I spoke to it. Five, today I read that two earths could fit into Jupiter's giant red spot, which is weather, a storm. Every six days it completes a cycle. Every six days, I find words to harvest and send them to you. Sometimes I find them by the side of the road, in the backyard, a lemon tree, a cat's eye. Six, where every day seems doubled, two words in one or what we plant, downpour, sunflower, upswing, Persephone, between someone else's house and someone else. Words count me, counterlocked, storm clocked. The key I leave under the empty pot by the door begging to be robbed. Seven, a squirrel must have been hungry, you said. Rip the largest sunflower head. 
light ripped and bent, leaf edges drooping to concrete between its land and water. I count the number of ants around his paw, cat dander, number of hairs abjecting the windowsill, thud of small bodies whelping wood, sheet rip of how to sing, claw singe. Eight. Every six days, a voice lesson at the unlisted house, ched or has so head songs, dark or bright, she said, open your mouth different to hear the tone. Make an intention, she said. And even this heaves my head open, flattens my back to back. I send you this message from 14,000 feet to go up the mountain, you travel back through time. Sarcotis sanguinea, you get your second spring. The scarlet flower appears in snowmelt. It steals sugars, a stunning parasite. Thank you. All right. So thank you, Alex, for having a book. And thank you all for Emily and Claire and, and Todd for, um, for joining and hanging out with us and reading uh, your work, uh, Todd, for, for hosting. And um, this is a truly a wonderful day and a wonderful occasion. Holy Week, April 2020. The city is a kind of sea with hilltop islands of wild space. From the Philosopher's Way in McLaren Park, San Francisco. Above Visitation Valley, a coyote sniffs the air. All anyone ever has left is, until that's gone, we watch each other. I lie down where the hummingbird sage spikes the open slope. A large crowd had spread their cloaks on the road. Others cut branches from the trees. Sometimes I pick out the places where I'd like to. They brought myrtle, willow, and palm to their makeshift shelters. Today's count, 83,374. Tidy tips, lupin, and gold fields. Try to remember a time when you felt calm. The Juno spacecraft reports countless swirling, hallucinatory clouds of storms. Atomic cycles of, it's hard to say, life continue. You open the bag of birdseed and pour into the swaying dish. This next poem also has an epigraph. In a red transient nightgown or astral call, and that's C-A-U-L, you are still divided from me at the instance of our arrival. Kimberly Lyons. <clears throat> Dark sky preserves. Because I wanted to learn how to look at the sky again, I chose from among your voices a constellation, nuclear magic numbers. I began believing in a we who are faintest at the zenith. When I found you listening in a whispering galley, marine and terrestrial, your whole body a tongue. I believed in your life bearing songs in stalactite time scale in helium articulate reverence and reservoirs over. Because you said the sky was a kind of ocean, we learned the alchemy of air. We became many. Do we have dreams or do we see them? Do you know the feeling in music or possession before it leaves you from pressure or percussion. Because there will always be light trespass, 
we made dark sky preserves because we could treat the darkness as property. Because I wanted to feel the air, visible breath, eternal ice. In a cyclone, you said, I will sing over you while you sleep. I will curate your dreaming, your sun lions and your chariot drawn by the sun. Thank you. Hi, um, that was so great. Um, I am so happy to be here. It's such a beautiful day and it is a great way to celebrate a new era, to celebrate this new book by Alexandra. So thank you for having me. And I'm gonna read um, some poems I've never read before. So you'll have to bear with me a little bit, but they're part of a series called The Goodbyes, but this is um, Goodbye 22, and I believe it's in five parts, <laughs> just to make things complicated, um, especially because I think like most poets, I'm a little math phobic. Okay, so Goodbye 22, part one. I squawk man to man to the boundary managed there is a common height a single fear pouring from one vessel to another address that could have been given, but wasn't. The United States formed an immodest thought that he could submerge himself in the recognizable parts and swallow them against how many deaths it is. It made me country in the hot imaginary because someone had to have the feeling I feel scaled up to New York City size. Otherwise, I don't know how to stand the stones about my throat. I never had much language, as if the name I need has yet to come, a word that when spoken includes, includes itself with the person speaking it aloud, an object in plain sight or a snake so close it is likely to bite. Okay, section two. Goodbye, 22, section two, okay. <laughs> um, but forgetting the men behind, when excused to clear the table, we converse with teacups lined on the counter. If X had opened his gate to me, I would have married that letter. Otherwise, the day moves not at all. The kitchen honey glint with expression going out. We leave it a folly, you imply, with mind like the feral cats we left the room to feed. Outside, we could stand for no damn nonsense, like the Kodak scientists in Jersey, tearing away the man to atoms. We ought to lump our atoms and sew them together. They'd call us an era then, or in man talk, all creation was at the party, where we served reasonably sized slices of spice cake presented perfectly on seven inch plates and adapting the conversation for women. Thank you. Wow, that was incredible. Um, so hi, I am thrilled to be here to celebrate Alex's new book. Congratulations, Alex. Um, and I am gonna be reading from my new book, which is, um, as Todd mentioned, is just out, um, I'll hold it up. It's called Weird Bird. Um, And I saw an ungainly pigeon flap from railing to railing, the white undersides of its wings looking somehow festive, as though it were the one creature left over after everything, and it couldn't help but enjoy the eerie emptiness. 
The moon is gone from my little patch of window, moved on to other parts of the sky. But I remember it as it was, pale as a vapor. Are we not spirits who would come back if given the choice between paradise and this palpable realm? Again and again, clothe ourselves in flesh, make heavy our limbs, sit wet, abundant, and wretched in this bodily mass, this clay. And in pain would we not come back, and in pain. Evening windows, lights inside turn back, superimposed over outside. When snow melts in the city, layers of sedimented cigarettes are released, go flowing down the streets in streams. And I saw a bird carcass, heart digested, its delicate skeleton gleaming, its tail feathers still attached to the bones, strewn out, long and damp. Sadness today is a physical thing, pressing in my throat. Spring changes the air, disattaches sadness from flanks of ice, makes emotion loose and frantic. The smashed glass seems actually to tremble, but in fact, it's the sky that's shaking, the sky that's falling apart. Smit with the love of sacred song, though born in times too late and times too ill, Still we gape along Milton's besotted speaker himself too late. The word arose in my mind, unconnected, but wheeling as though in orbit, moon watcher, where are you? Bluff them, dawn all slabs flashing wild, the while huge, into wrist and no sun, to the dark solid morning across time, saw her trance hilly along and struggling, as left her flock still on something silhouette of the club, forms unforming maze, come winter bare but searching, saw not the phrase and bear, whether labyrinths form starlings and spreading magic in visions down and waking strange you, solid neon air, bird meddling time, air flung, fall against through the membrane corridors. <clears throat> that was amazing, Claire. I, I had the privilege of, of, of seeing and um, embracing one of the, I think, early versions of that manuscript. And um, it's, it's so beautiful. And uh, you should go buy it immediately if you are watching this. Um, it's really super honor to be hosted by Todd on this particular day of Biden's confirmed presidency and to be with Emily and Tiff and Claire. So, um, so thanks and to Owen Hill who uh, allowed this to happen despite our disappointing cancellation of the original event we were going to have in March, back in March, of course, perfect timing of the release of this book. <laughs> so, um, all right, I'm starting out with um, a poem called Vigil. Vigil, a hiccup of light where I flashes in and out. Room to whip hours, verging fiction until hours leans to real see. Make rooms ripen the smell of a heart, rip out the iris to see, under cadence moving, berber, wood, flesh, where I fell speech to splinters, honest as any, treeless place. Dear believer, imagine waking to a white room fitting blank sheets of words on a nurse whose eyes hold no other color asking of the pills, why are you so afraid? In the corridor of her unlined palm, she asks, don't you love nature? She says like a ghost echoing, she says nature to brand the white fever of her finger onto your tongue. She says, all you are doing is taking some of the sea into your mouth. 
So I'm going to read as an end into this first phase, uh, the first poem in my book, which is called We Are Biologically Responsible. And I'd say that this poem, along with a lot of the other poems in the book, are loosely exploring um, the relationships between epigenetics, environmental toxins, and uh, what some would call mental illness, and I prefer to call neurodivergence. We are biologically responsible. <clears throat> As in my great-great-grandmother was forced by your great-great-grandfather, or was it flipped, either by skin or word, but the outcome the same. They say the unheard shut down the way hay rips scars into wrists, the way granite fields bloom back bruises under spillover because they had to keep it turning. They had to keep it, but something already grew there to add to the 11 children swooning, red-cheeked around cliffs like crows, searching for ground, barely breathing. My grandmother grew mad because her husband long lived inside bottles spinning trees and her lover forgot her to wind. In wind, you see our ancestors shout and flap at each other underneath these ledges and leaves from which we all breathe. Together they travel and sew this thread our bodies without even trying. They spool and slip inside until they become one piece of cotton. Until we become one rocking cradle, one swinging diagnosis, one arbitrary filler we'll call America. Thank you so much, Alex. Thank you, Emily, and thank you, Claire. Oh my gosh, it's beautiful. <laughs> so I'm, I'm really honored to be in this company. Um, so the next uh, poem I'd like to read is um, kind of a long poem, a lo long-ish, um, and it is more or less inspired by um, Walt Whitman. So it's called Earth's Body. Could I not at random enter all, enter you openly into herself or his self or the mother and father of selves, enter bedrock, the silvered edge of sibilance, diluvial medium of me, the speech secreted. I close your eyes, I hear the colors of earth at large through exhaust pipes, through the precise ore picked from bone or the wild root ascendant nearest me. We are of the same lineage. Of a still warm oven bird picked from the sewer grate to carry in your cupped hands, your offering, your metabolizing dream body that eats night air because it is a tangible thing. Of the words we found, they were light enough for tilling Dissolving medium of me, close your eyes. You are bleeding out into the bright helium night in which I tuned you, harpsichord by the sea. Be a thousand sleeping fish, be ink thrown under the hull. Be the fruit that ascends from the last tree you looked so intent at. We were denied the original forest that grew here. We claim space, light, water, and fail. Be the scarlet pollen and the amber. The first thread coming out of the fleece trapped in vegetation. The threadbare resemblance. Diluvial medium of me, a rain of forms comes over me. There are bones in the riverbed. You touch me where two rivulets meet. Thank you. Okay. I'm really enjoying hearing everybody's poems this way. It's really fun. Okay. <laughs> this is goodbye. 22, section three, I think, okay. My girl elbowed broom and like that I was unfinished. A bird heated on the salt and pepper landscape, in other words, a company town of the phrase's sake, 
where from at the tip of romance, I left that phrase for the sentence and from there to the syllable's throbbing heart. Be glad I want to let time roll and drop right into shape. Otherwise, being as common as a sound in the air, I must assume every person believes what they are doing. We cannot go home in a thunderation, nor can such expression get there with both feet. Before I left the city or village that it was, by necessity, I had to try my hand at know-how. Turn the radio on, just the dew growing easy, through wire to Schenectady, New York. Oh, what a thrill, and more and more, the remarkable must be already transmitting. All down the word magical, empty, and one babbling bridge. Length Rome couldn't believe the spirits. Spoke how we was lichen, shining, ablative in the trees. Glass, turn you to people, glare brimming my superstition, worsening in time. Empty me as we empty the dream, our light away into looking. Shadows grows in ghosts, window over prophecies, windows side elsewhere. You said the word reverie and the sound of wings charged the air. Hildegard of Bingen writes, I am taught inwardly in my soul, therefore I speak as one in doubt. And in a vision I saw roaming clouds of pigeons turning in indescribable shape unshaping turning and reforming all the birds gray, but for one which was eggshell brown. Death's hands in the night. And again I bleed, am bleeding, dissolving. In one exchange, sometime after 1152, a younger mystic named Elizabeth of Schonau wrote to Hildegard for advice because she saw a vision in an ecstasy, but didn't know if she witnessed an angel or a devil. In response, Hildegard writes, listen again. Those who long to complete God's works must always bear in mind that they are fragile vessels. They can only sing the mysteries of God like a trumpet, which only returns a sound, but does not function unassisted. For it is another who breathes into it that it might give forth a sound. The indeterminate pronoun they in the clause, they are fragile vessels. Might, might refer to those who long or to God's works. And what is the difference between angels and devils? Hildegard writes, ah, woe. Then all the elements became entangled in the alternation between light and darkness. Neither good nor evil, but the alternating between intertwined forces makes us make music. We who are empty passages through which the breath of another passes divine or satanic. Clouds boom out beyond, beyond. You said, the spaces between us are infinite only when we make them so. Well, this is really fun. <laughs> wow, Claire and Emily and Tish. <clears throat> California fire. We throttle out of rent, ash CFC storming lung shifts, rend the visibility of air. Her toddler cough arches as one metaphor for all. I mean, digits burn, then burrow flesh. Butterfly effect, but the entire population breathes wind right. Borrowed light means deep throat health warnings, emergency conditions. She takes her straps off. Unreal eye shot, but bloodier. The sun pg and &E forgot to clean up. Real time US EPA PM AQI is now 201 to 300. Ling clots. Red geese A-line into cross stitch. Halo crosshairs. 
Afterthoughts, wire, pines. Record the ignition point, Lear hung and pharmaceutical, I say to her, I'm gonna count to five. Then you've got to stop. You got to put on your seatbelt this second. So I'm going to read a poem I've never read aloud, um, except to my poetry workshop, some of whom, um, some of those folks are in this room. Uh, and it was inspired by my study of the, the history of the 1960s and the literature of the 1960s um, and teaching about that decade. Um, but as I continued to explore all of that, I realized how it was like studying now. So this is called 1963. It's so strange, these things that come back, Jackie. Fingers pat my hair into columns, spattered gold cinched at the waist. I bloom voiceovers to edit his stained back brace, adrenal cufflinks. Imagined pinafore, I swear him into glass to sob into the crap. So help me tell the caliber size of the bullet, semi truck roar of his ear flap, of hair biting my mouth, moving, our eyes unsound glare of chrome. So criminal. I felt purple hearted soldiers spiral an autopsy, defend the constitution, flood the states of grieving. A woman adapts. She must let them see what they aim for, burning chandeliers, the choker of pearls, all portable parts. I reanimate furniture to try to get to history, the truth I know is real, is a pillbox account to chime Chanel, pixelate the motorcade, open the top of his head, a sunset then ebbs in the crowd, leaps in my arms, crying, hold it all in. His wonderful expression whips the paragon of animals. He was one checkbox away from nuclear belief is like this. Throng hung into spiral, bobbed into white gloved pavement, daisies nodding, please, I'm sorry, cracks over my fault choked pearl. This wept smoke and blood, this our glass torsion, our windshield heritage. Thank you so much, Alex. Thank you, everybody. Um, okay. Starflower. My cat is also sort of like being really crazy in the background here. So if you see a little creature jump up, don't be alarmed. Starflower. I turn my back, yard face. My cat crawls under borage, lit to blooms, to fuel, star fever. That blood orange sun, I forget what to hearth. From Taos, New Mexico, a friend writes, it's yellow season here, beyond assembly lines, between the sunflowers and fulfillment centers and the rabbit brush. In my mind, I'm turning over the crypto economy to rot, to flower, fuel. I bend to touch the scabiosa and go sub rosa. Desire is feeling with roots, then dissolving in rain. Grounded as calcium, split as water, silica, and magnesium. Release to the lithosphere. I want to see the fields through optically thin clouds. To hearth, I forget what orange sun, that blood fever, star to fuel, blooms, 
lit to the borage undercrawl. My cat faces yard back, turn my, we could eat these small blue petals. And lastly, I'm sort of obsessed with abecedaries and, and so I've, I've done uh, numerous and this is the, the most recent one. Abecedary in four parts and it's been inspired by the uh, Danish poet Inger Christensen who has a wonderful book um, based on the Fibonacci sequence, a book length poem called Alphabet, which I absolutely recommend everybody read. Okay, one. Alms blood, atom of iron melted once inside us. Cobalt bombs, salted earth. I watched dendritic elder flowers, psalm a path I call Fibonacci's grace. Because your teeth and bones once were coral, hydrocarbons in the ice age. Two, June nights kingdom come thy will be in the Carboniferous forests, as in livestock melancholy, as in we might half hope to find the animals in the sheds of a nation kneeling at midnight. Aben. Three, Nova's optic nerve, somewhere in between we are plucked, orange spots, minerals in transit, nasturtium bright. Four, can we predict quantum restitution? Call it karma. Call it my stolen tenderloined under the wire violet wound. I was saving for another incarnation, a new zeno yearning zenith. Thank you. Okay. Um, goodbye 22. Number four. <laughs> okay. um, to persuade you that at some point, perceiving this one, you could have felt every thorn in the briar patch. And still, when later you encounter the prickly common thicket, the shrub in general, you with the briar rose fall behind the streamer in streamers green, matching the cause or mark on your skin to each individual bramble. Like when Plato reprimanded Aristotle for wearing too many rings, the opinion that he foisted upon the chest as if the fingers belonged to him, what they wore and wrote. Moving up sometimes he thought the hand was his as well and even the manner and way in which it moved. Less chatty than it was before, he preferring to be disliked or feared the glint of the perception rounding off the knuckle would every time likely put Aristotle ashore. For a sense of repetition, I guess one could borrow the metaphor. Did you see what I saw? Do you have evidence to reconstruct it? What happened at the moment you met again? Sun buoyed up to the single day that before it had occurred, you were a blank shape, not big boned or breathed between that you, when upheld to what you wanted or desired to be, were baffled, altered in a jot. But if you, look at, if you took it outside its sequence, removed it from the heat of chronology, maybe the outrage that touched it would stop dead, as if the instant itself went passive, not resolved or fixed, not the white dwarf cat star, casting back on the red giant it once was, both more and less than present. Like it just happened to be where your heel pressed and this happened to be where you stood. I dreamt that we grasped air and from our fist outburst words. In this place in the notebook, the writing is illegible, written after sleep arrived in the limbs if not in the brain, written in darkness, written over all the words that have come before, all the words now jumbled. At the door of the campus building stood a cop holding a gun. 
wreathed by a stroller's halo, a fat baby sweetly and inexplicably smiled at me. Death rushes through the body as blood rushes. An eyelash falls. Even so does death disrobe me of, of my ornament. Reek wrinkles on the cool pool, slip in death, bleeding again, the skin dissolves. A bus blasts by into tumult of leaves, despair in the night. Out from sleep's corridors, still I write to you, am writing, dream shadows contortedly doubled up from waking's pain. Pain that returns to my body as my body returns to light. Pain returns in mourning as light too returns today. As seasons return as Milton writes, so too does pain to me return. Sunset on a window like a splat, black tree shadow, orange bright brilliance. In my blurred heart, I hold the words, last night a DJ saved my life with a song. I hold my hands over the heat generated by Seizure's charge, sparking air rubbed on both sides by sound. <clears throat> this is based on a true story. <clears throat> the Test, 1934. Great Aunt Ella feathers an essay, blot, bleeds a page. She grips humanism because human means obsessive, means to determine what isn't pure enough. She copies on new leaves when her professor rushes to rip them, shove into his leather. Then the student committee to determine her innocence or not. But Ella believed, believe, She'd cheated four siblings out of college. Believe she slipped. One eye, then another, cried 72 hours walking into flood. So Lottie got her fixed. In Agnew's asylum, Ella's want to please named her schizophrenia, AKA melancholia, now bipolar one, or anxiety, democracy, familialism, psychotic disorder, not otherwise specified. Three years forward, release, then returned. Not even my mother could find out why, how, or what else has our DNA plagiarized. So I feel like it's appropriate to, to read a new poem at every reading. I appreciate Emily and her courage for reading new work. Um, so I'm writing, kind of a new book, I, I think I could trust to say, and I'm thinking about free will a lot and the relationship between free will and time and beauty, among other things. And so this is called, If Only Beauty It Is That I Will. If only beauty it is that I will run my mouth against, tongue our gold and tin, call our texts what they'll become, Phone of liquid waste, cyanide runoffs. Inside night current, thicket blooms, race to our dew-eyed clearing. Because what's beautiful can't be possessed or destroyed, a virus forms at our feet. A spiked flower burns apathy away, scrapes the face off our system, deforests us and this sky in seizure. Dawn raises my head again to conflate Corona with Corazon. The heart of the matter is this was always an away game, a right way to tie on any mask. Breath away, bombs away, wish away. On the street, for example, watch my neighbor on her phone walking toward me. Look at her hurry to the other side. Look at you, turning. The sky just a fever away. Remission, wetter in sun lifts than what sets, mushroom blooms. In my chest, 
Feet whisper and splash, the pulling forth of genes in remission. You cannot help becoming aerial, clean. Up flap of laughter, so involuntary robins snicker, chime muddy bark and spool sage to know well how droughts need awakenings a flood to taste ours. Thank you so much, Alex. It was beautiful and very powerful. Is Godzilla saying hi? Hi. She's going over there now. Um, so I believe we are on our fourth and final round. Is that, am I counting correctly? Okay. All right. A letter in May from Portola, San Francisco. The city is a labyrinth. I walk. In my head, another poet repeats, there is no space left in America. There is only distance. Last night in corpse pose, I thought about the corpse flower. Death camas, lily of the valley. This morning I dreamt a single many petal bloom emerged from my thigh. You wanted to name my new flower. The city is a labyrinth. I walk in my they body. Anders als die Andem, past the international church of the four square gospel, the water tower, the bee, whose flowers are flames lit to the lady, the rabbi and herbalist, past the consulate of Malta. How do I create the distance you need to reach across? Looking out the bedroom window, I repeat after you, Pinus Pinea, Umbrella Pine, Italian Stone Pine, Parasol Pine. I ask, how is it possible that we can still see the Salesforce Tower from here? This morning, I carry Briquette downstairs to her sunspot. Her malleable feline creatureness, comfort in mass, the weight of those I love upon me. The city is a labyrinth. I walk in my invasive species body, where from the shadows that our forms fall, where people forget you in time. Itasca, Odessa, pushed up against Fleetwood Travel Queen this edge of reservoir. Underneath the Arbutus Unido, Irish strawberry tree, to the quote, tragedy of vehicular homelessness, the cane apple, you are part of the city, the city will forget. I've learned to walk along the structural scars of a city, where from all architectures I am, awakened in subduction, lost under the 101. Hey, Gamily's next. This is the last one. Uh, goodbye 22 section five. Okay. Mad woman, the tears came down again and dared me not to look the same on my face, but did hold my jaw open while I walked into the reality I could not prevent. Do I need to understand cruelty for cruelty's sake? The brute standing right before the instant of comprehension at what must be a well-paid post. Could they bloom again, turn away from the handful of men, move on without obliterating or halt across the street from the conjunction of the thought before the feeling takes root? No cat calls, no jeering, nor dazzled thereby over sweet, not lying in wait to catch a weasel asleep, 
just learning to live under the Athenian fleets? Or is it more than impulse, a ration fed, a commonwealth cause that propels one towards their own two tear, tear ducts as they themselves forget how to weep? Or could they not quite stand up to what it was or is or will be that turns them bitter? The taste of that leaf then enduring and enduring in that same rhythm that though they never aimed at it, once arrived upon could only follow that single beat. Thank you. What an uplifting way to celebrate this day and Alex's amazing book. Um, thank you for including me. Thank you, Alex, Tiff, Emily, for your words. Um, and thank you, Todd, for hosting and also to Owen and Mos. Um, I woke at four and believed that all of my thoughts were little bloody teeth. So I tried to collect them in my fingers as the first pre-dawn expectation lightened the window from gray to lighter gray. What I wrote with hands trembling hands is now legible, except one fragmented passage about the sea of sleeping lapping the edge of the sea of waking, two chaoses without shore. I wrote lying down my book on my chest in the dark, and as I watched the shade of my own hand faltering across the page, my help, myself somehow wrenched out of myself. I no longer knew my own body, and I had the feverish conviction that someone something else aside from or outside of my mind compelled the pen. Do we resent our permeability? You loved me best in dreams. A rusting tank on the cargo train, everything empty, everything all the time, among the violences of our love. When traveling alone, one joins stranger families or the families of strangers. Permeable in time, Parallel tracks, a child's stare, and then a woman slides her finger under her watch band, rubs over her wrist under the band. As the light changes, so too does the world underneath. A field of wires, what some call power. Along familiar paths of feeling, I taste the future. I, what taste, not ash, ash. Blood seeps through to the other side. I don't believe in Satan exactly, but down the hall, someone went dragging and grunting as though pulling a long bag. Winter green verge, verged ongoing, careen tingling, unmaking spirit within, blue share binds the breathe in, changes from your cords, guy, what body, light, visible, full print, and breathe moons, ongoing air, what blew of bright into interbreathing, moon air circulates us, could loop, no mouth to careen, air verge, clatter mutually forever, suddenly loose held parting spirit from body what, body from, eaves melt, unbinds we, I coursing, other we. Clearly, if you're watching this video, you should buy Claire's new book, Weird Bird, and Tiff's book, and Todd's book, which we have not mentioned. Todd, will you please give the name of your book to everyone? Oh, come on. T Tiff, you want to tell? Uh, My book is called Vitreous Hide. It's from Lavender you. Inc. Okay. It's another, Emily, it feels like another person wrote that book now. Yeah, and Emily's <laughs> National Park, which is amazing. All right. Um, and just super thank you to all of you. I feel so energized now. I just want to write for the rest of the night, which is an amazing feeling. Um, but we're going to watch Biden's speech soon. Um, this one is for Claire. It was inspired by her second book, Oil Spell, which I believe is also available at Omnidon. And it's incredible. Its forms are incredible and taught me new things and also the language. So um, 
It's called GPGP Great Pacific Garbage Patch. It was also um, inspired by time I spent with my son. Over tuned sand, we unzip plastic, tongue fevered screens to drink lunch clots, confetti, PBT, aisles. We become aerial drifts in our lungs, not brighter PVs, rubber, PBJ, graining, hieroglyphics. To hook orange soda, ghost nets of 12 nations, weight of 500 PCBs or jumbo jets. A yellow bucket holds my son to acronymic reduction. A single white handle, he landfills. Wretch brine stench at my neck exfoliates breath, warmer. Microbeads trap sun, unseen splash in my mouth, exposures open, soundless, as if to float in kelp dioxin. Wind speed. Tidal wings hiss bony USDs. He pushes down unsinkable CFCs, his submarine a size of Texas, unimaginable. I can't trawl teradata, but serrate into smaller pieces. Shoring rosary beads, our laughter resurfaces, flowers worn again, like blue moths pressed. Waist flat. I drink vertical. I drink the waterline in this overtuned land. Now dressed by fennel, I unshell his counting without shadow ruins. He swallows my duress, my sublunary noon. And this last one. Um, I also have never read before, but Tiff read early versions of it. And it used to be a sonnet um, I wrote on my, I don't know, my like 37th birthday or something. And then it was written backwards and it turned into a prose poem and, it, and then it evolved. Anyway, thanks for listening. Dear Believer, our revolt demands heavy sky. Methane circles and wanes humming the tent tumultuous. Hurry, say you fell into a year. Storms before flying, home a septic one names to stake the necessary. Many last, but mouth the marsh, swallow branches where scars grow back. A copse once before, here you swell, fishing, small speech, your ponding gasoline, sun splashing trout and leaves, aspen to spin ash, concentric if no moon click in the night, shadows pad, for what search? There is no inside. Hour of lily spans green fans, a lake mirrors. Oh my God, you guys, that's so amazing. That's really amazing. It's been such a pleasure being here and getting to hear all of your wonderful, wonderful, wonderful work. Um, so yeah, everyone go buy all of their books. Tiff Dresden, Emily Leibowitz, Claire Stanzik, and Alexander Matra. You can get their books on sbd.org, Cultural Society, Omnidon. Um, Claire is also from the University of Chicago Press. Um, so go find those books. Go to Moe's, buy all the books you can carry. Um, thank you, Owen. Thank you, Moe's. Thank you for showing up and being the audience uh, to this video. Poetry, poetry. What more? What more? <laughs>